so um, recognizing that uh, those countries that have monetary sovereignty have uh, policy space to achieve a wide variety of economic objectives and recognizing um, that public blight unemployment stagnant wages are a part, are part of the core problems, what would you recommend policy do over the next five, ten years um, to address those issues? Yeah, well, there's a, a long list. But you, I think you begin with, um, say, the worst problem that you have, um, and then you um, start building from there. And, and probably the worst problem that you have in both the UK and the US is the lack of jobs, especially for young people, um, and especially for people who didn't graduate from college. So I think you tackle that one first. And you can um, use a, an employment program to also start tackling the infrastructure needs uh, and the infrastructure repairs. So that um, in the United States in the 1930s, we had uh, a problem of unemployment. Unemployment was about 25% in the United States at the depths of the Great Depression. We created jobs programs uh, such as the WPA which um, that program alone employed 8 million people. They built a lot of the infrastructure in the United States that still exists. Um, in really important respects, the WPA is what brought the U.S. into the um, 20th century. We actually were an underdeveloped nation in the 1930s. We got our highways, our airports, our schools, our public buildings um, were all built during that period by workers in this program. Now, you can't put all the unemployed in this kind of a program. Um, you need additional um, uh, programs to employ the unemployed. Uh, but we have sort of an equivalent need, which is care services for our aging population. And so people who aren't particularly suited to um, working on infrastructure projects can be put into care services for the aged, for the infirm, for the bedridden, for the people who can't leave their homes, who need some help around the house. Uh, Meals on Wheels is a program that we have in the United States. Things like that that can be done by other kinds of workers. So you can start chipping away at the unemployment problem and at the same time you're also helping to uh, chip away at the infrastructure and care services for the aged problems. And, and not to mention that there are uh, very many environmental needs, yes. many of which can be addressed with uh, low-skilled, uh, labor-intensive initiatives, uh, whether it is reforestation, whether it is uh, soil renewal, uh, etc. Um, it's easy. insulation. Insulation. We could we could mobilize um, a wide range of skills, mm -hmm. ages, um, work experience in those kinds of projects. So I, I think that's the first one you go after. This is uh, fairly easy to implement. Um, you can look at how the United States did it in the 1930s. You can look at how Argentina did it after their crisis um, when they created the Hefes program. Um, so there, there are historical experiences with uh, job creation on very large scale, very successfully uh, undertaken. You can look to those examples and, and see how to do this. So th then we've got uh, a major problem of inequality. Um, and a lot of this is created by this, the, the, the sort of form of capitalism that we are living under. Uh, Hyman Minsky called it money manager capitalism. Other people call it financialization of the economy in which um, the financial sector has become too big, too out of control, and uh, sucks far too much of the nation's income uh, to itself. So it's getting, the financial sector in the United States is getting 40% of all corporate profits. You don't need a financial sector that takes 40% of all the profits. Financial sector is supposed to be an inter intermediate, intermediary um, uh, sector of the economy, and it doesn't make sense for it to be this large. So you need to start downsizing that you need to start downsizing the um, uh, really horrendous uh, rewards that people in the financial sector are getting. Um, that is a big cause of the rise of inequality at the very top of the top. Randall, is it, is it very difficult to achieve that? I mean, um, that it's, 
sounds like something I personally would agree with, but would a banker or a CEO of a big bank agree with that? Yeah. Well, if you, you know, the extremely high rewards of the top management of corporations is not market determined. It's very clear that it's determined by the institutional nature, the structure of, of the economic system that you live in. Just as, as an example, if you look at the, the top um, corporate CEOs in the United States, typically make on average about 350 times the um, salary of their average workers, mm. 350 times. If you go to the UK, it's more like 140 times, okay? Why? We have very similar economies, right? We, have, we operate in the same international markets, but here the rewards are very much higher. It's because of the structure of, uh, of our financial system mostly and um, of our corporate sector in general. Go to Austria, it's only 35 times. You go to Japan, it's uh, uh, smaller than the UK. Then um, uh, uh, Germany is about the same size as the UK. What I'm saying is, it isn't the market that determined this. Okay, it's the way that we reward our top executives. This is a this can be changed by policy. Um, as far as the oversized financial system, again, this is not a result of market forces. This is a result of public policy. If you go back to 2007, all the so-called too big to fail institutions were insolvent, without question. Insolvent, riddled with fraud. We easily could have shut them all down. We should have shut them all down. We should have prosecuted their top management. They should be serving prison time now. Okay, this could have been done. It still can be done. Okay, there is a statute of limitations on some of the stuff they did, but we know that they're still engaging, they're still being caught, still doing the same things that they were doing. Okay, so this is a, a failure of public policy. All we have to do is, is uh, adhere to the laws that already exist. It's not a matter of creating new laws to make the things illegal that they're doing because they are already illegal. They've admitted that they're engaged in fraud. They're paying huge fines. They should be prosecuted. They should be broken up. I, I generally agree with uh, Randy that you got to tackle, tackle the most important problems that you've got. Look, it was the famous British intellectuals that told us that the two outstanding faults of society were the problem of mass unemployment and inequitable and arbitrary income distribution. So that was, that was John Maynard Keynes. And the British social reformer beverage is the one that gave us the modern welfare state. Um, and provided a way of thinking about uh, what a public safety net would be. And so if I were uh, to move ahead with policy proposals, I, I think that I would strengthen the safety net. One thing that uh, we have reasonably successfully done is we have addressed um, most problems of the modern 20th century um, in very direct manner and direct ways with the exception of the problem of unemployment. So when, as an example, if the problem is food insecurity, we provide food assistance, we provide food stamps. If the problem is housing insecurity, we provide housing. Um, when the problem is lack of retirement income, we provide retirement income. In other, way, in other words, we have found a way, uh, in a very direct way, to solve these economic problems. The one that we have not solved in a direct manner is the problem of unemployment. When there's the, the problem is identified as lack of jobs, we don't provide jobs. We provide training, we provide uh, unemployment insurance as a temporary safety net, but we need to rethink how we address this issue. So uh, putting in place a direct job creation program of the kind that Randy Ray is talking about, that. Um, uh, suited for the modern world, for the modern needs, would be one way to address the unemployment problem directly, but also informed by this, this understanding that um, this is a safety net. You capture those people who need jobs in times of need, and you release them into private sector employment when the private sector is ready for them. 
And um, in this way, you stabilize the economy much in a much more effective way, but you address unemployment and all of the um, numerous social, economic, political costs associated with it. Most people don't think about the fact that we are paying for unemployment already. We are paying for unemployment and um, the uh, health costs that are borne disproportionately by the unemployed, the problems with children in homes that have unemployed parents, with problems of crime that are associated with youth unemployment that is quite cyclical. There is an indication in the research that there is a cyclicality to, to crimes that is associated with lack of job opportunities. And there's plenty of evidence that um, shows uh, how people benefit from direct job creation programs. So we just need to put two and two together and um, rethink the way we go about addressing the macroeconomic problems and specifically the problem of unemployment.